joining me today on the Uniweb interview show, Jennifer Haskins, author, former agent, consultant, and artist. Jennifer, thanks for coming on. How are you doing today? Great. Thanks, Matt. Absolutely. How are you? I'm, I'm wonderful. I'm so glad to have you on the show. Um, I've been excited to talk to you, uh, not only as an author, um, because I love talking to other, other writers, but also as a, a former agent and consultant now. Um, I've been wanting to pick your brain on a lot of different things. Awesome. And I know this is something that you, on your blog, that you talk about a ton. Yes. Your, your time as an agent um, and now as a consultant, right? Right. So for people who don't know you, if you want to give them a little bit of background uh, in terms of what you've done, I know you have you, you do have a you have published a book, um, two books, right? The key well, of that. Got one out last year, and I have one coming out in June. Right, and it's the key of F. Yes. Correct is and, the book that you published. Yes, and the one coming out in June is called The Queen's Heart. The Queen's Heart, and is that part of the same series? Yes, it's a trilogy. So the awesome. third one will come out next year. Okay. So let's talk about this. You you're a writer, um, but you did you didn't start out. Uh, as a writer, you started out in um, as a literary agent. I mean, obviously, you had a love for writing, that kind of thing. But if you if you could kind of tell us your your path into this. Um, well, I started out actually as as an author and going to a creative writing workshop at the local community college, where um, I had fourteen other people in the class that got to read my work and give me their feedback. So it was really awesome to have that many different perspectives, and mm -hmm. it helped me really shape the the first book. Um, I wrote the first book in two and a half weeks, and it wow. was just a pile of trash <laughs> at that point. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ernest Hemingway said, "The first draft of everything is crap." So um, yeah. it was, uh, and I workshopped the the different drafts and and it it turned out into something that that i'm proud of and um published with a small um a small press uh i had an agent and um and she got me a deal with this small press and um and then they are uh, because of first rights um going to publish the whole trilogy so okay and that's the key of f yes what is what's the key of f about it is about a girl named Fail, who is a girl warrior. She hits 18 and she starts um, having visions that come true. And okay. she changes one to save the life of her crush, some guy that's uh, already shot her down three years ago. Uh, uh, but she saves his life and then they're chased by thugs coming out of the woodwork and, and they have no idea why they're being chased or, or hunted um, the only clue they have is a key that her father gave her as he lay dying and he said this key is your destiny and that's all she knows so they think it's got to be connected to this interesting why why do, why do they always wait till they're dying to hand you the most important thing in life right what the right? hell is that about <laughs> i don't know <laughs> it's just more dramatic that way i guess Absolutely. I love the name Fail, too. Where where did the name Fail come about? Was it just like... It was uh, in a dream. Homage to failure? <laughs> okay. No, you'll notice none of my books have the word Fail, F-A-I-L, in them. Because... It, it hers is F-A or F-A-L-E? -L -E. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. The, the, the R word Fail is not in their vocabulary, so... Ah. So um, it came to me in a dream. I, uh, I, had a dr I had a dream of one scene in the book. And when I woke up, it was like 6 o'clock on a Sunday morning, and I was like, okay, I'm just going to go back to sleep and remember that. And <laughs> as, that always my, as, I, yeah, <laughs> as I opened my eyes uh, from the dream, I saw credits scrolling. And it was mm. like, it's a book, dummy. Go write it. And I thought, oh, yeah, I'll just... I'll remember that when I wake back up. And I just, I kept getting this feeling, no, you've just got to get up and write that scene. Everything you know about it, all the backstory that comes with it, just anything you understood about that scene. And I wrote from six in the morning till 7 p.m. 
uh, 13 wow. hours. And I had finally gotten that scene out. And just in the next two and a half weeks, it, I couldn't write fast enough for it to come out. That is was amazing. Just, yeah, it just it's took over. Pouring, pouring out of you. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that the best feeling when it happens and then when it turns off, you're just like, ah! now, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. What now heck? what do I do? Yeah. 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 And it, well, because you you wrote you're writing the second you wrote the second book. The second book's done, right? It's just in editing and that kind of thing. Oh, it's um, completely done. Completely finished. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because June is just a month away. Yeah. Um, yeah. What was writing the second book like? Was it that same kind of mind blowing experience? I wrote it in the next two and a half weeks. So I wrote five weeks straight and got two books out of it, and then the third book took me over a year to get yeah. it written, and it it's. It's just steaming pile of poo right now, waiting for me to go back and edit it. So, <laughs> it's marinating. It's it's amazing how that happens in writing, though. It's it's just like either this incredible flow of omnipotent, just amazingness, or it's like or absolute or garbage. You know, just like banging on the keyboard, just whatever. Maybe that's why those letters didn't work on the keyboard. You know, that's probably <laughs> it. Bang. <laughs> I have a lot of anger with H, V, C, and Z, apparently. That's it. Well, I want to know, too, because so now you've been on the side of speaking with publishers, getting people book deals as a literary agent, and now as an author working with a publisher. What's your what's that transition been like for you? What what are some of the things, you, things you've learned in the process? Um, agenting is uh, the publishing business is very subjective of course um when you send something to an agent it's got to just tickle them in all the right places um yeah. and if it doesn't it's not for them and you sure. move on to the next agent and it's just you're looking to find the right click for you and and it's really hard not to take that personally as your mm -hmm. book baby and um as an agent it was really hard to tell people no um, and to reject, but you have to reject so many of the, the queries that come in because good writing, there's a ton of, you're looking for something great. That, yeah. that thing that's, that you can really get behind and help them push forward. Um, it was, it was a hard transition in the beginning just because you have to learn so many things, um, the, the technical things, but there are also um, connections that you have to make with right. editors, acquiring editors at the publishing houses. Um, without connections, you're not going happen. anywhere. Yeah. Right, it doesn't happen. And I, I tell authors, you need to make sure that the agents that you're, that you're scouting, your potential agents um, have been working and have, uh, sold something in your genre. Um, I mean, somebody's got to be the first. But if if you can get with somebody who's experienced, you know they have those connections, yeah. um, and you know they can at least get you where the best possible deal is. So, and and I, I always wonder this too because I do imagine as a literary agent, you're constantly fielding hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of queries, uh, I don't know, weekly or whatever. And it's got to be something to where you're just like, does it all just run together at some point? I mean, how how are you even keeping up with like, if, if it's good, do you forget like what's good anymore? <laughs> are you just like, what the hell's good anymore? I don't even it, remember. It's like, hard. It's like, I feel that I do. And, I, and that was that was a factor. It's just like when you're a writer and you write and you and you're not reading. If you're yeah. writing and not reading, after a while, everything starts sounding the same. It's all coming out of you. And you've right. got to read to get, uh, read those books published by the top five to, to see what's, what's good, what's selling, what's hip. Um, and yeah, going through a bunch of queries, sometimes you're swiping left, swiping right, you know, it feels like you're on Tinder, you know, and um, after a while, after a while, some of them do sound a lot. This, a lot of them sound very similar to each other. As much as everybody n feels that my book is so unique because it came right from my brain, 
brains seem to work really similarly in different people and a lot of the same concepts will come up yeah it, 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 i mean it's got to be tough too because we're all literally just trying to put words in in a different order that sounds more appealing it's like we're all using the same verbiage we all we all have the same playbook it's like <laughs> just use them better make a better <laughs> rhyme make it better right and that's and it's it's hard to it's hard to like i'm sure as an agent to be like hey this just needs to be better <laughs> like yeah. what other what other critiques that's, are you giving people besides hey this needs to be better honestly that is one of the biggest answers and that's one that you cannot give to a yeah. writer they are not going to accept a rejection letter that just says sorry you're just not good enough yeah you're just yeah. not there yet um yeah. But sadly, a lot of books we get just really, that's it. They're just not there yet. And and um, so if you're going to use an editor and that kind of a thing, I suggest you do it before you, before you get an agent. Because an agent is looking for a work that is one revision away from being published. They're looking for something that's, that's done. Yeah. And I, I had people write and say, well, it'll be finished soon. And I just had to say, well, come back when it is. When you're so, ready, I'll be here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I, it's got to be a tough business. Um, I, I've talked to some people, a lot of people in the querying process of looking for agents and that kind of thing. Um, what is the, in terms of like having a... Um, query letters is there like a length involved about with a page. about a page i've heard like 150 words to a page to some i've heard some people say two pages it used to be only one page when it was when it was typed and sent in mm -hmm. um uh with the the advent of email querying you they can't really tell if you've gone over a page um right. because you know, email just doesn't do that. Um, but I try to tell people, try to keep it to a page um, if you run over a little bit. The thing is, um, with what you want in your query letter, that's, it's gonna, it's gonna use a smaller length. Uh, if you just have your introduction, your concept, and your bio, um, if, you, if you keep it pared down and really exciting and interesting, then it really doesn't need to be that long. Yeah. Are there certain things across the board that like, I know it's very subjective, right? And we're all, all the agents are in, are looking for different things that hit them. But is there something across the board that's like, if it's missing A, B, or C, I'm just not looking at it? I know a lot of agents that were really strict on word count. Yeah. Um, if you come in and your word count is too low or too high, they'll just automatically reject. Okay. Um, some people don't care. Uh, some people are, are looking more at concept. Some people are sometimes an agent and I only did it for a few years, but the, the more established agents get thousands a day and they get so far behind that, um, you know, they get in there and they're just quickly making, making these decisions. Um, and I forgot what I was saying. But yeah, <laughs> they're in there quickly making snap judgments and they just kind of fly through it without even because I, I yeah, I was going to say I can't imagine it's it, like we talked about it, just running all together. And I've actually like in, in trying to plan out query letters for my future publishing, I've, I've thought of unique ways to catch their attention by like somehow um, using some form of uh, mind manipulation. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Like, I see now that you're opening and turning the page and like trying to get into their head as much as possible. So they're like, is this guy watching me or something? You know, so it keeps them reading. Cause I don't know, like I know that everything's pretty much been done. So how are you going to stand out? Is there any, is are there any that have stood out to you when, during your time as a literary agent that you can think of that you were like, I've never seen this before. Um, I have enjoyed a few that, uh, like a Peter Pan storytelling in space. Um, that was, cool. really, that was a, 
a former client of mine had thought of that and and it, it was really good um there there are just a, a few i can't remember specific story ideas but i remember that they were concise and they were exciting um they piqued my interest in a way that i thought i have got to read more of that yeah and that's it's like what, a, it's like a gut feel right like it's just yeah. something that grabs you by the stomach and you're just like well oh. i tell people i tell people you want a query that is going to make a stranger want to read your book because yeah. the the potential agent is a stranger to you yeah. instead of going to your family and going is this good and they'll all say oh of course timmy that sounds great and, you know <laughs> make up a couple of a couple of blurbs that sound interesting about your book and say which one of these makes you want to read my book the most yeah and and because you're trying to make somebody that's never met you that's never heard of you like your idea in a way it's like uh, clickbait like yeah. we're looking for, i mean we could take a lot from viral marketing and clickbait and like how are, how are these companies using taglines to incite people's interest so much that they have to click on some stupid article yeah <laughs> hopefully i'm not saying people's books are stupid i'm just i mean like <laughs> no 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 nobody's book is stupid no absolutely not you haven't read any of mine so anyway <laughs> <laughs> so how has this but what was it like for you uh coming from that side of the field and then going, did you already have somebody you had in mind as an agent when you went into writing and wanting to get your book published? It was uh, uh, someone I had been acquainted with, yes. Um, and I queried her, uh, and I queried several other people uh, as well. But it just, it was serendipitous. It just worked out the way that it was supposed to, and things fell into place. Um I would, I'm going to be querying again with my, with my next book, the one that I've written. Um, and even people were surprised that I, I'm not an agent anymore, but even when I was an agent as a writer, mm -hmm. I would need an agent. Agents do need agents. Yeah. And it's to, because you know, you're just a writer to them. Right. Because and, nobody believes you sell on your own stuff. You're like, yeah. of course you think it's great. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. That's wonderful. No, you, you've you got to have somebody else who thinks that as well. Right. Um, but, yeah. Again, okay. I'll turn it on. It's okay. <laughs> so, you, not not this third book, because the series is all being published under the same publishing house that you're with now, right? Yes. Um, but for the fourth book you, you've, you're working on. Yeah. Do you want to... Tell us a little bit about that one. That one is about, um, it's another young adult um, book, but it's not a, as much fantasy as sci-fi. Uh, it's about a girl who lives in a cloud city, a city in the clouds um, called an aerodome. And there are a group of people that live on the surface underneath them. They call them the serfs. And mm -hmm. um, the, the main character is being raised to take the place as leader when her father is is murdered well it's supposed to be an accident but she believes he was murdered and in trying to solve her father's murder she comes across a man who she found out is wanting to chemically alter the city and so it's a race against time you know what i notice and i'll tell you after because i've done uh, almost 100 interviews now with uh, authors that when i ask the question about what your book's about it it is a very difficult question because there is so much involved when I ask you, though, it's almost like, and I'm sure this is comes from practicing, from reading so many synopses and stuff like that, but you have it down to where, like, you can tell me, like, you give me the blurb immediately. Learn your blurb. Learn your blurb. Is that That's... not the most difficult thing in the world to write, though? Like, how do you compact this life-changing thing for you into 120, 150 words? Yeah, and as basic as you can make it, um, if you can get it down to a one liner, that's even better. You know, if, if you can get it down <laughs> to <look> great. <laughs> Peter Pan retelling in space, I mean, that, that says a lot right there. Yeah. And that's, 
you know, no, not very many words, but if you can get it down to a concept, you're in good shape. Yeah. So what's it been like marketing for you? Um, I know now with, with uh, publishing houses, unless you're part of like a massive publishing house chain that you, a lot of the marketing is done by the author themselves. Yes. Yes. I'm doing all my marketing. How 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 have you been going about that? Because I find that with with a lot of people in the writing community, a lot of authors, writing a book is the easy part. When it comes to the other side marketing now, it's like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> None, yeah. Nobody knows what to do. Yeah, marketing has been very difficult um, in that I feel like I'm trying to open doors that that are closed. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to get reviews for for my book from bloggers. Um, trying to, I, I had a video, an official video trailer made for my book, and that that helped tremendously in my exposure. Um, exposure is what you want. The more people that see your book, the more people that have an opportunity to buy your book. So right. really, you're not begging people to buy it. You're not begging people to review it. You just want to get it in front of as many people as possible, mm -hmm. whether that means putting it in your newsletter, putting it on your website, um, pimping yourself on social media. <laughs> Somebody's got to do it, right? So basically just planting as many seeds as possible. Yes. Yes. Okay. Getting out there and hustling. Right. It can, be, it can definitely be a, um, a scary and overwhelming task to do. Uh, I want to make sure everyone knows where they can find your stuff. I know you got to go. Um, the so you have a your website. Yes. Right. www.jenniferhaskin.com. And that's where we can find your blog as well. Yes. With and that's got you've done a series of ask an agent, and you're on uh, number twenty five right now. Where questions to a, to an agent, and so anybody who has any questions regarding. Um, querying agents or trying to find an agent and they can go to your blog and then go to your website, jenniferhaskins.com and they can pretty much get a thorough rundown of anything they would ever need to know on finding an agent. Hopefully. And if they don't <laughs> find what they're looking for, always ask, feel free to ask. I am happy to answer questions. I opened up um, Twitter uh, and asked who wanted to know what and i got a bunch of really great questions that i've been doing in a twitter series um okay. i'm on number five of the twitter series of going through those questions that people real people are wanting to know you know mm -hmm. so hopefully i'm answering them yeah <laughs> but i'll keep going until i get them all answered that's right well and we do appreciate uh you doing that because it is a scary thing for all of us as authors is trying to find help it is. We all, it's, we all want it's to write. The, unknown. the yeah. unknown is so scary. And that's right. the thing I want to do. I want to shed light on it and show you it's really not that scary. It's really just a process. And once you know what you're doing, it's so much easier to navigate. Yeah. It's, it's like it really is just figuring out what is the first step. Mm -hmm. What is the second step? And then just being able to walk forward in it. Um, the key of F. Yes. Right. Yes. Is out now. You've got it right there. Beautiful. Key of F. Book two will be out June. June, I think start? 22nd. Yeah. June 22nd. Yeah. Awesome. Um, Jennifer, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate your time. Oh, sure. Thank you for having me. Oh, I appreciate you giving me some grace. Sorry. <laughs> it, it happens. <laughs> it's all good. Well, I hope you have a wonderful day, and uh, we'll see you next time. All right. Thanks, Matt. You're welcome. Bye.